Hey everybody, Joel at Open Earth Aquatics. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, first thing I gotta say is um, on our way to 300 subscribers. Uh, thank you to every single one of you. And if you're not subscribed, please consider it. It would really help out. Um, second thing I wanna say is sorry, I haven't been super like active with my posts lately. Um, vacation last week, kids' birthdays this week. So not much time to be down here, but I am doing some new things, doing some updates um, and moving some fish around because we've had some different things happen so let's go around the room see where all the fish are now and we'll feed them some uh, frozen brine shrimp in the cubes again because you guys all seem to like that so let's get started all right up first the 75 gallon south american tank with just the green texas in it um, if you can see if you can get a good look at him his mouth is a little banged up him and the rainbow cichlid kind of got into it a little bit as well as the vieja and the rainbow cichlid was hiding all the time. Uh, the vieja had a nipped fin. The rainbow cichlid had damage on his head and this guy's got damage on his mouth. Um, he's gonna get pretty darn big. So he's probably just gonna live his whole life in this tank. Um, one of these guys in a 75 gallon is not the worst thing in the world. If I can find another one the same size as him, I'll just do a pair of them and that'll be that. So let's see if he takes to that frozen food. He's finally starting to see it in the water there backed up because he was um, obviously a little freaked out by the camera in his face. So let's uh, give him a minute and there he goes. Good to see him eating, especially when they're injured. That just shows that that injury is not bothering him too bad and he's not getting sick or anything um, or else he would not be eating the way he is. So let's move on here to our breeding rack. So this is just a little five gallon with uh, just my pink endlers. Um, no babies yet, but the females are starting to plump up. That one's obviously holding as well as the other female in here. Um, I'm going to do a full cube here just because um, it's definitely been, uh, there's definitely enough snails in there that it'll all get eaten and none of it will rot. Um, and that's pretty much all that's going on here. It's going to take a while for that. I don't know if you can see how dense the plants are in here. It's going to have to just kind of slowly melt, go down to the bottom. It's gonna take a while to see them eating. Move on here. There they are. I can never get these guys on camera and they're bigger. So there's five of these albino bristle nose in here. They're growing out to breed in here, um, as well as breeding some blue mystery snails, which have a ton of nests everywhere. Hasn't been long enough for them to hatch yet, um, but just the fact that they are they have nests. I have a lid on, keeping the air humid. Um, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't hatch out. This tank will get a full cube too, again, because of the snails. Um, next down the line, these are my purple mystery snails who've been building no nests and a ton of, um, actually every every different color in there. It's just a mixed endler tank and it's so grown in that you can hardly see any of them, but there are some babies up front. So we'll put some food in here as well. Again, not much has changed here, so I'm kind of going through a little quick. Um, these guys have been in updates as well as having their own videos. So our next tank here, gold mystery snails with red cherry shrimp, as we can see coming up to the front. There's one, about a dozen of them in here. Um, and then ivory mystery snails with the blue dream shrimp. You can see one on the ground back there. Again, these are just the originals I put in these two tanks. It hasn't really been long enough for them to have any shrimplets yet, but they are holding eggs so that is a very good sign um these guys and of course i left it all the way over here are going to be getting the shrimp granules from flu ball so we'll go ahead and drop a few of those in there one-handed for you move on to the next tank kind of do like a rapid fire fish room tour here without spilling any food and again just one small pinch is all i'm going to do for both tanks um, little more in the reds and the blues. I have about a dozen reds and only about six or so blues. Those are gonna take a while to sink and then they'll eat them up. Uh, again, they do get flakes every day too. Um, I do feed all these tanks on this breeding rack twice. Might as well give some love to the goldfish and see the koi's missing and some of the bigger single tails are missing. Um, it's cause they're in the big pond. If you haven't caught that video, uh, check it out. It should be on the channel by the time this one comes out. And then here's just my black endlers give them a cube black endlers these snails that I'm breeding in here are the blue snails but they're not the blue mysteries they're the blue um, blue spotted 
ram's horns. So that'll be cool when we have a ton of them because they're light blue with dark blue spots. Again, this female here looks like she's plumping up and like she's holding some fries. So let's see what we get out of them. And we'll move on to the next one. The, uh, this 125 South American grow out. Um, some things going on in here. Wow, I should have cleaned algae before I filmed this. Sorry guys. Our Viejas in here. Our electric blue Acara and our black Jack Dempsey, as well as this guy who's, uh, yeah, <laughs> our green terror. And uh, six silver dollars and an albino Bashir. The green terror is finally, finally, after many treatments with parasite stuff, acting like himself again. No more stringy poop, really. And um, really just curious to see if he eats. This tank is going to get two cubes of the frozen food. And he's right up there with them. That is a great sign. So hopefully we can start putting weight on him again and uh, go from there. This tank also gets fed hornwort. All my overgrown hornwort um, because the silver dollars will constantly munch on that. They're always looking for something green to eat. Um, oh, okay. So the Bashir is out and some of the food is making its way to the bottom here. I always worry about him with feeding. He likes to wait for it to come to him, and with all this activity going on, I do worry that sometimes it won't, but there is plenty going to the bottom, as we can see. And uh, we'll move on to our next rack of tanks. Well, I put food in this tank. Thought I was filming, but I wasn't, so uh, two cubes of brine shrimp went into here. All the tiger barbs got a bite. Picked his cat, got a little bite. Went back to his hidey hole. The uh, kissing garami's not in here anymore. Um, the rainbow cichlid is way down back in there. You can just see his tail. He's beat up a little bit, so I'm giving him a little bit, but the tiger bars have been leaving him alone. He's been leaving them alone, so I think it'll go okay. Just somewhere where I, I figured he'd be all right to just relax until he heals. Um, and if it works out well, I'll keep him in here long term. He doesn't get too, too big, so. Uh, we'll move on to, we'll skip over these two and come back and feed him flakes, but we'll move on to our uh, Embuna. Sorry, buddy, didn't mean to knock your toys over. Uh, our yellow lab and Buna tank. I'll probably do two cubes in here, too, because these guys got some appetites. Come on now, take a cube out of there. There it is. One and two. As I film, these all kind of like melt in my hands, so I gotta like swish the whole package out in here because <laughs> a bunch gets left behind otherwise. Um, I did get more black diamond blasting sand and did a few of the tanks with that, so that's kind of fun. Um, I think it just makes these guys look so much better. That yellow just stands out so much more. And we'll watch them eat. They kind of let the food come down. They take a bite. They go back to hiding. Uh, it's just their nature, I guess. But um, yeah, all's well there. And we'll skip on to female betas. Female betas, x-ray tetras, blood fin tetras and five, um, wow, I can't believe I can't remember their name, but they're, they're smaller catfish, Raphael cats. So there's some spotted ones and some striped, or one spotted one, the rest are striped ones. So I always do three like healthy sized cubes in here just because that's a lot of fish to feed. You can see how tame these female betas are. I can literally grab them out of the water by hand. I don't for obvious reasons, but they would let me, I'm convinced of it. Um, so they're doing pretty well there. Nothing has changed really. And um, yeah, that's about it. I really like the look of the tank. We are getting lots of algae in there. There's nobody in there that really eats algae. So um, I just kind of let it go because I don't, I don't mind it. The fish don't mind it. it. Doesn't affect the water quality. And these tanks down here really aren't necessarily for looks for me. It's more for functionality and how to keep my my animals either breeding if I'm breeding them or just keeping them healthy and alive if they're a pet, you know, so. The algae doesn't bother me, but it's all personal preference, um, but that's just my opinion on it. They're all taken to that frozen food pretty well. They eat it quick now. At first they didn't. I think it took them a while to figure out what it was. Um, yeah, as of right now, all is well there. Um, here's my two and a half gallons. Still no fry from this green, like, snakeskin pair of endlers but the female is obviously getting close you can see all the egg, all the fry inside of her and uh, still the same amount of fry from this blue pair I my guess would be about 20 of them or so you only ever see like two at a time and of course they were just out and they kind of dipped when they saw the camera as to be expected what I'm gonna do with them is there's a little bit of like um, brine shrimp left over from this one cube 
So we'll just pour a little bit into each. Um, the one with the fry in it will get a lot more, obviously. Um, or not obviously, I guess, but just, just because I don't know how many fry are in there. There are snails to help clean up the mess. That plant fell over on me. No big deal. Uh, we'll get it to stay. There we go. So, um, yeah, so there's that. Get a good look at them eating. Their mouths are very small, so it'll take them a while. The snails very well might get most of this, but oh, there's a little fry in the picture. I hope you saw that. And then I'll check some of these cubes here. Here's another one that we don't have that we didn't get all of the brine shrimp out of. That'll be the food for the white clouds, the albinos here, the regulars here that are hard to see on this uh, gravel. I think I should just cover that gravel with sand so maybe we can see them a little better. But they're in there, all's doing well. I did see some fry swimming around in the golden tank, um, but I'm, I'm sure they got eaten by now. Um, this water's starting to go green again. Get some in each, and um, again, they're they're coming for it Dad. now. What's up, buddy? Oh, I splashed you with water. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, it was an accident. You okay? <laughs> yeah, fish water. It's okay doesn't look good for you oh my goodness the conversations we have down here um yeah so they, they take the frozen food really quickly now they were another one that just wouldn't eat it at first and now every time it's in the water they go absolutely nuts so um that's kind of cool to see as a matter of fact you can get a really good look at the ones that you usually can't see when there's frozen food in the water they're going crazy the um the goldens i don't know if they just don't like the camera or what but they came out did the same thing as soon as I put them on camera, they're all hiding in the back and they're spawning them out back there. But this is just my back stock. All my breeding stock is outside in the ponds. So if they eat their fry, they eat their fry. Ponds have a lot more plant cover and green water and um, chances are they won't eat all their fry out there, but we'll know at the end of the summer. Um, this is kind of a fun tank. I just turned this 20 gallon into another like pet fish tank. Um, took the frogs out, put them back in a 10 gallon so I I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I can keep two in a 10 gallon, but I probably will end up rehoming two. This is the, um, if I can get him on camera in here, there he is. Electric Blue Jack Dempsey. He's so cool, I just kinda wanted to keep him as a pet fish. So we'll grow him out in here, decide what to do with him. Squeeze a little bit of brine shrimp into the water. See if he takes to it. I don't know if I've fed this since I've got him, so we'll see what he does. Again, there's snails in here for now. When he gets big enough, he'll eat them. But yeah, he's eating that no problem. It's just, and look at the color on him. He's so beautiful. Um, me and my kids all love him so much that uh, I'm sure he'll end up with a name pretty quick here. And we'll move on to the next tanks. Last few tanks down here. These are the gold rams that are in quarantine. So I haven't really been feeding them. Uh, they were fine for a couple days, the six of them. But, um, one of them died and now another one's got a cloudy eye. So I haven't been feeding them much and just put some meds in the water to see what would happen. But so now we'll try to feed. Um, one thing I didn't know, apparently these guys eat plants because if you remember, those of you who've seen some updates before, this tank was full of hornwort and now it's not. They picked it right down to the stems um, and then they ate all of the stuff that landed on the bottom, off the bottom. So they like really decimated that. So we'll try to try to save the one that's still sick and keep the other ones and grow them out, grow them all out. And um, hopefully get them at least a breeding pair out of them is the hope, but you never know. Um, if that doesn't work out, we'll just try something else. It's all one big experiment. Um, and then here's our big guys. I think I have probably two cubes left and they'll just get what's left of it here. Oh, look how excited they are. You can tell I haven't been home in a couple of days. They're not even scared of my hand at this point. And they'll get some pellets later on because the big guys aren't going to get super full on this, but I might get some of the smaller ones out. Like here comes the convict. There's our kissing garami. 
who actually does really well with these guys. I've had him with them before. Um, he's doing just fine. Um, he still acts weird and super shy, but he's doing just fine. And uh, one other fish I'm hoping to see in here is that fire mouth, but if he doesn't come out, he doesn't come out. He's very, keeps to his own, and I think he kind of made a little territory for himself on the backside of this log, so we don't see him much. And right underneath this guy's belly, through the algae that desperately needs to be scraped on this log here is our Pleco, who's probably about a foot long now. But um, we'll do some more updates on them as time goes on. And um, that's about it down here. So one want good look at everything. And uh, I think that'll be it. All right, guys, super short one today. Um, just a little quick update on everything that's going on since I haven't been posting a whole lot lately and uh, some frozen food feeding because you all seem to like that. So, um, you know, more to come soon. I got another busy week here and then we'll get back into like our species only stuff and just maintenance stuff or any anything you guys want to see. You can let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, so thanks for tagging along for this one and um, I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for stopping by.